Sabbath, everyone. Today is Hillcrest Family Day. And since uh, it's Family Day, I decided I would make an announcement. That announcement is I don't have a kid of my own, so I had to borrow one. This is Noah. And uh, let me go ahead and give him back to his dad so we can go ahead and finish this. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll be the phone. Here you go, Pops. <laughs> so, it is family day, and I want you to spend some time with your family. Uh, we're going to do our regular service, so there's going to be music, singing, a sermon, some special guests. And um, we're just going to do a regular virtual service while you figure out ways for you to connect with your family since you won't be in the building today. Um, this is an experiment that we are excited to do, and we can't wait to see what God has in store for us today. So let's get started. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. It is good to praise the Lord. God is so good and has allowed us to see another Sabbath day. We want to take this time to follow what the scripture says in Psalms 95 verse 2. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exhort him with music and song. Let's bow our heads wherever you are to talk to the great God of the universe. Our loving Heavenly Father, we bow our heads and our heart to you this morning, thankful for your blessing. You have been so good to us. You've allowed us to pass seven days and come again to worship you in spirit and in truth. We invite your presence in the presence of the Holy Spirit to visit each heart and home during this service. May we be drawn closer to Thee and be able to feel Your presence all day long. This is our prayer, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Hallelujah. It's so great to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to welcome the guest of honor, although we know he's always in the midst, but we want to give God a formal invitation as we give praises to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together wherever you are. Come on, stand up, make it your sanctuary. And let's worship God today in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hey. Everybody lift it up say, here we, here we, here we are, Lord. Our Lord God, and we're awaiting, awaiting your, your arrival. arrival. Hallelujah, God, we welcome you. We welcome in this place. In this place. God, we're in the midst, in the midst of, our praise. of our praise. Say, here we, here we, here we are, Lord. Our Lord and we're awaiting, awaiting 
your name, Jesus. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Hillcrest family. I bring you greetings from Columbus, Ohio. You guys know I love you and I miss you and you will always be my church family. Uh, today, I just wanted to share a story with you all for the children's portion of this. Um, there was a boy by the name of Billy and Billy had been inside all day waiting for his mother to get off work. Billy wanted to go swimming. He wanted to go swimming in a pond, kind of similar to the pond that we have here. And he had been waiting for Mama to get home so he could go take off and go swimming in the nice pond. And so Billy saw Mom come home and he was so excited as Mom pulled up and she got out the car and he just took off running. He took off his shoes and his shirt and uh, put on his uh, swimsuit and he dove right into the pond and Billy didn't even say hi to mom or give her a hug or kiss or anything. He was just so excited to be able to jump in that water and feel the coolness on this hot, hot summer day. So as Billy was swimming in this pond, he was swimming closer and closer to the middle of the pond. Mom was watching and she noticed that there was something else swimming in that pond as well. And as mom looked, she noticed that there was an alligator in the pond as well. So she said, Billy, Billy, come back quickly. Uh, turn around. And Billy, being such an obedient child, like a lot of you, he made a U-turn and he started swimming back to his mother. And so Billy is swimming and swimming and his mom is waiting there uh, at the bank and you can see her feet are starting to get into the water because she wants to grab Billy as soon as she can get to him. And Billy gets to his mother and he reaches his hands out and she grabs him and she starts to pull him up. But what was in the water also grabbed Billy and it bit his leg and it started pulling Billy one direction and mom was trying to hold on to Billy. Now mom wasn't as strong as this gator that had its teeth sunk into Billy's legs but she grabbed with everything she had to hold on to her son and this gator began to pull and to, to fight with mom as she tried to hold on to Billy and she dug her hands in and her nails in doing everything she could and she screamed and yelled and luckily, there was a car driving by and this car stopped. Matter of fact, it was actually a truck that stopped and he pulled his shotgun from out of the back because he could see what was going on. And he took a shot at the alligator and the alligator released Billy and mom was able to pull Billy into her arms and hold her son. Now, mom had to take Billy to the hospital immediately because he had scratches and bite marks on his legs and he also had scratches and cuts on his arm. And so over time, Billy healed and a news reporter decided to come visit Billy in the hospital. And when he was there, the news reporter asked Billy what happened and Billy shared the story. So the news reporter said, hey, Billy, do you mind if I see the cuts and the, the, the scars on your leg? And so Billy showed the news reporter the scars on his leg. But Billy, with a smile on his face, do you want to see the scars on my hands and on my arms? He said, my mother held on to me so tight that it scarred me. But these scars are badges of her love. Boys and girls, aren't you so excited that we have someone who loves us so much that they would be willing to be scarred, be willing to be hung on a cross, be willing to be persecuted and hurt for us so that we may have the opportunity to be in heaven forever. On this family Sabbath, I want you to remember that we have been adopted into God's family and there's nothing that he wouldn't do to protect us and to save us, even if that means giving up his own life for us. I want you to remember as you enjoy this time with mom, dad, brother, sister, that you have been adopted into God's family and he loves you so much and he wants to do everything he can to protect you and to get you into heaven with him. If you'll bow your heads with me, 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to just be a part of your family. Lord, we love you and we appreciate you having the scars on your hands to show how much you love us. Lord, we ask that when you come back that you'll be proud of us. You'll be so happy that we followed everything that you wanted us to follow. We lived the life that you wanted us to live. We were disciples as you asked us to be. So you can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you can show us the scars and the nail prints on your hand, showing us how much you loved us. Lord, we can't wait to see you. We know you're coming back soon. Make sure we're all ready for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good day, Hillcrest. I love you, and I can't wait to see you in person. Hallelujah. It's prayer time in the house of the Lord. And how many of you all believe that the prayers of the righteous availeth much? Hallelujah. talk to God. Isaiah 65 24 says before they call I answer and yet while they're speaking I hear. So aren't you glad that we serve a God that actually listens to us and he knows before we ask what we need. So right now I just want to just take this time before we pray to just give you just a second to think about who you want to pray for. Who's on your mind right now? And we're going to offer that up to God. We're going to go before him right now. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for what you have done for us, for bringing us to this point, for all that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for this Sabbath day. But Lord, you tell us to come before you boldly. And that's what we're doing, Lord. We have so many things that we want to thank you for. But Lord, we have so many people that need you right now. And we want to ask a special blessing for, for Gail Harlan, Esther French, Greta Fields, Gladys Owens, Benny Woods, James and Demetra Scruggs, Mary King, Sharon Enlow, Gwen Patton, Dorothy Hyde, Jackie Knight, Jessica Williams, and the Williamson family, Laura and Dennis 
Grace and Jonathan. Lord, there's others that I may have forgotten or can't think of at this time, but Lord, you already know who needs your touch, your healing touch. Lord, we pray for our marriages. We also have a special prayer for the graduations, the graduates who are graduating. Lord, we thank you for, for the opportunity that they have and that they've come through. Lord, we thank you for what you've done for them. Lord, we're just so grateful that you are an awesome God, that you are a God who listens. You've created the stars in the heaven, but yet you still listen to us. And we're grateful that we can call upon you. So Lord, we, we ask you to bless this church. We ask that your Holy Spirit come down and rain upon us today. Lord, we thank you for just getting us here. No accidents. Lord, we ask that you get us home safe. Thank you for protecting us. Lord, we know that there's so much going on in this world, so much chaos, that you're still in control, though. We rest on that, Lord. That is, that is, you are our rock. So, Lord, we're, we're coming to you today, asking you for so much. But, Lord, we know that you are faithful to give. You're faithful in all that you do. You cannot lie. We thank you for being a God that cannot be borrowed or bought or conned. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you've already done. We just thank you, Lord, for being who you are and helping us to have an opportunity to know more of you and love you even more today. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's praise and worship time in the house of the Lord. We're so grateful to be here this Sabbath morning. As it's family Sabbath and you are at home or wherever you are, we want you to make it your sanctuary as you get ready to give God praise. Amen. Come on, stand up on your feet wherever you may be. In your living room, your bedroom, in your den, your garage, we, even in your car. We want you to make it your sanctuary because it's time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The song says, write them on the tablet of your heart hallelujah bless your name Jesus come on stand up on your feet and put your hands together bless your name Jesus hey hallelujah bless your name God oh come on everybody sing it say right say hey right. hallelujah come on we're gonna sing that one more time we want you to sing it with us it says right them on the tablet the branches he who abides in me will forever be fruitful in thee yeah. hallelujah say I am the way thank you Jesus the truth and the light no one gets to the Father except if they go through me yeah. hallelujah come on say so let not and true, and true. Say forsake, 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 forsake. Let not mercy, Let not mercy. And true, and true. Say forsake me, forsake, forsake me. Say you really are Hey, come on, come on. We want you to sing it with us. Say you really. Jesus, the truth, the truth and the light. no one, no one gets to the Father, except that they go through Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, say really write them down. Hey. Hallelujah, I love this part. 
bless your name. Hey, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Hey, trust in the Lord with all your mind. Hey, trust in the Lord with all your strength. Say, lead me not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to trust the Lord today. your name Jesus hallelujah I'm so glad Whew. I'm so glad that we serve a God a God that is never defeated no matter what comes his way he will never be defeated and because he will never be defeated if we hold him close to us we will never be defeated does anybody believe that today hallelujah bless your name God we have the victory through you Jesus and because of it we will never be defeated hallelujah anything the demons have to flee cancer has to flee sickness has to flee because you are defeated you will never be defeated Jesus everything else is already defeated hallelujah bless your name Jesus shall go I will be I will go in victory no weapon formed against me will ever overtake me I'm going to sing it again see I shall rise I shall be, 
I shall go in victory. No weapon formed against me will ever overtake me. Come on, everybody, sing in one voice. And because God, because God is the greatest, is the greatest power, we shall never. Hallelujah, we shall never be defeated. Come on, say, and because God, hallelujah, is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, we shall never be defeated. Hallelujah, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, we shall never be defeated. We shall never be defeated. Let's see if you can say. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Bless your name. To the top, say, I shall. Say, I shall rise. Say, I shall be. I shall be. I shall go. I shall go. In victory. In victory. Say, no weapon formed. Hallelujah. Against me. Against me. Will ever. To overtake. overtake Come on, three part. Say, and because. And because God. Hallelujah. Is the greatest. The greatest power. Thank you, Jesus. We shall never. We shall never. We shall never be defeated. Hallelujah. Defeated. Come on, sing. Say, and because God. And because God. Is the greatest the power. Greatest Does anybody power. believe it today? We shall. We shall never be defeated. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Say, and because God is the greatest power. Say, we shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. One more time. Say, and because God is the greatest. Thank you, Jesus. We shall never be defeated. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. The song says that the devil is a liar. But God is exalted. He'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. I'm gonna sing it one more time. Say that the devil is a liar. Y'all believe it today? But God is exalted. Thank you, Jesus. Never be defeated. He shall never be defeated. Come on, one voice, sing it with me. Say. But God, God is exalted, and He shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on, say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. But God is exalted. God is Thank you, Jesus. Never be defeated.
Jesus. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise right there where you are. If you're grateful that we serve a God that will never be defeated, no matter what the enemy tries to throw his way, our God always wins. Hallelujah. And for that, we ought to give God praise and celebrate him. He is the greatest power we shall never, never be. Come on, can we lift that up one voice? And because God, he is the greatest Right here, he sh we shall, we shall never, never be defeated. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're grateful that we'll never be defeated, you ought to put your hands together and let's give God praise right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Hillcrest family. I pray all is well with each of you and that you're already enjoying this beautiful Sabbath day. I can't wait to hear uh, all of the testimonies about all the ways that you spent today, whether it was out in nature with your family and friends, serving the community, going on a nature walk, whatever you did. I look forward to hearing how the Lord led you and how he refreshed you during this time. Well, I believe the Lord has a message for us today, and I want to invite you to bow your heads with me as we ask God's blessing on this preaching moment. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the gift of your son, Christ Jesus, and your word that points us to him and reveals more of who you are to us. We ask that your spirit would come now and that he would be our teacher. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. A few years ago, near the Pacific Northwest, a certain shepherd was leading his sizable flock across the plains down a steep slope. Watching the shepherd and his flock was a young pastor who had never been to that part of the country and had never been this close to an actual shepherd. He notices that the shepherd is carrying this one particular sheep that seems particularly near and dear to the shepherd. The sheep is draped over the shepherd's shoulders and is the only sheep being carried in the midst of a sea of sheep. Curious, the young pastor goes over to the shepherd and asks him why he's carrying this particular sheep on his shoulders. The shepherd replies, oh, this one? Well, he got away. The others responded to me when I called them to come, but this one just kept walking. He kept going so far that he did not know where he was or the kind of danger he was in. He said, with these sheep, you have to catch them early so they learn how to stick near uh, to me and, and hang on for their survival. The young man said, so you carry sheep that have a tendency to wander. No, the shepherd replied, I broke this sheep's leg. Horrified, the young pastor asked now, why would you do that? Oh, relax, the wise shepherd said. It is for the sheep's benefit. I broke him so that I could carry him. It makes him learn to depend on me. You're looking at the bandages, worried about the sheep right now, but in the long run, the breaking of his leg will save his life. You see, by the time he walks again, he will know my scent. He will love my voice. And because of this, he will never wander off again. He's broken so that he could learn to depend. It is so easy to become overwhelmed with our weaknesses, our struggles, and our pain that we are unable to see the benefits of being broken and God's purpose for allowing our pain. Today, we'll see why the Lord allows weaknesses, why he allows hurts and heartaches, disappointments, and pain to come to us. He allows them not because he wants to hinder us or discourage us, but in order for us to learn to depend on him, to depend on his goodness. He wants to show us his incredible strength, even in the midst of our weakness. And so today, I wanna to talk to you just for a few moments on the joy of being 
gracefully broken. Please grab your copy of God's word and turn with me to a familiar passage of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I wanna read from the English Standard Version of the Bible, starting in verse seven, and I'll read all the way to verse nine. And here's how the word of God reads to us today. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Here we see that one of the most noted and celebrated disciples in the history of the Christian movement openly and unashamedly talks about the agony of his struggles. He allows us into the painful inner musings of his heart as he grapples with the reality of his weaknesses and his inability to rid himself of its suffocating grip on his life and soul. He has been a follower of Jesus for some time now. In his walk with him, he has had the profound privilege of experiencing his literal divine presence while traveling on a dusty Damascus road. He heard his voice audibly and has for countless times been on the receiving end of the outpouring of his spirit as he ministered in his name. But although he walks with Jesus, he still finds himself struggling with the, with a weakness that no matter how hard he tries, he just can't overcome it. And here we can't help but notice that we can be in a living relationship with Jesus, being used mightily by him, even desiring to do his will, but not escape the agony of pain and suffering. Just because we serve him with all of our hearts and and have time and time again been the recipient of the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. And as much as we would like, it doesn't mean that we are somehow exempt from pain or from our weaknesses. Our past experiences with the Lord uh, uh, don't necessarily or they don't excuse us from having to deal with and face the reality of our inadequacies. Paul calls it, a thorn in his flesh. And it is the word used to describe a stake or a sharpened wooden staff used to, to stab a person in order to inflict immense and incredible torture. In an attempt to get us to see the severity of the pain, he calls his thorn a messenger of Satan a pain that, that is stabbing him in the, the heart, a pain that is designed to harass him, to beat him constantly, to buffet him. It, it, the word carries the idea of being struck with a fist. It's, he feels as if Satan is punching him. As excruciating and debilitating his weaknesses, Paul is somehow able to keep things in the proper perspective. He's able to see the Lord's divine and salvific intent in allowing Satan to harass him so relentlessly. He knows that the Lord has already weighed and measured his suffering and has granted Satan permission to proceed. In other words, he knows that the Lord has already planned for his weakness and has made provisions for his need. He's also able to see the benefits of his brokenness and the reason why God has allowed this deficiency in his life. This thorn, this messenger of Satan, he goes on to say, was given to him so that in order to keep him from becoming conceited. In other words... He knows that the Lord allows the weakness to remain in his life or in the lives of his followers so that we won't become overly confident in ourselves. He believes that, uh, uh, that God has allowed this so that we won't think that we are the reason or uh, the reason for our success and forget our need for him. Our Lord allows brokenness 
pain and suffering to remain in order to keep us humbly depending on him. We can't help but notice how he pleads with God over and over again, complaining about this thorn, wishing God would just get rid of it. He begs him with all his heart for him to remove it because he knows he can't, he knows that he can do it, but instead the Lord tells him no. And what do you do when God tells you no? When the thing you're praying for that causes so much pain, he says, I'm not going to take it away and instead says to us, I'm going to leave it right there because it is for your good. We know the Lord gives good gifts. We know he has all power that he can get all of our bills paid, keep us from all hurt, harm and danger. We know he knows how to get us a promotion on our job, send a windfall to our bank account, get us a larger home or a new car. But we don't like his gifts that comes to us in the form of a no. We don't see it as a good thing especially in light of our pain and our suffering, our suffering and our trauma. When he says no to put an end to our thorns, it challenges our understanding that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And try as we may, we just can't see what good comes out of being broken and him allowing our brokenness to remain. He says in verse eight, I pleaded with the Lord three times about this, that it should leave me. A prayer I'm sure we can all relate to. Asking God over and over again, Lord, please remove this thing from me. And instead of removing the pain, the Lord says to him, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I'm enough for you. You don't need the thorn removed. What you need is me, my grace. And so instead of removing the weakness, the sin lodged in our soul, the part, of, the part of us we know just ain't right, he instead provides us with his presence. Instead of removing the hardship and the hurt, the pain of the violence that others have done against us and, and their mistreatment, he instead provides his grace. Instead of removing the tragedy, those things that cause our hearts to break, those things that weigh us down mentally, those things that cause anguish in our hearts, anxiety and distress, those difficulties that cause us to feel like the world is closing in on us, he instead provides us with his grace. He allows the thorn to remain so that we have the experience of him carrying us. He allows a thorn to remain so that we can know and have the experience of what it means to stay close to him. So that we can know his voice, so that we can know just how incredibly strong he is. That he is from everlasting to everlasting. That he knows how to give power to the weak and strength to the weary. How to rescue the perishing. That his compassions fail not. That they are new every morning. That he is good to those who hope in him. That he is faithful and true. And that those who trust in him will taste and see that he is good. He allows the thorn to remain so that we might be reminded of our need, but also more importantly, that we can bask in the depths of his goodness and in the power of his grace. Ellen White in her book, Testimonies, Volume 8 says, there is but one power that can break the hold of evil from the hearts of men, and that is the power of God in Jesus Christ. Only through the blood of the crucified one is there cleansing from sin. His grace alone can enable us to resist and subdue the tendencies of our fallen nature. You see, beloved, without the grace of Christ, we are hopeless. Nothing can be done for us. His grace alone can work in our heart. And so Ellen White goes on to say that it is through the impartation of the grace of Christ that sin is discerned 
in its hateful nature. It's the grace of God in the heart of the believer being poured out that causes us to see how horrible and wretched sin is. But she goes on to say that it is the grace of God that finally drives sin from the soul temple. It is the presence of God in the heart that pushes out the thorns. Sadly, there are many of us that have not yet given up on ourselves. We actually think that we have the power to change our hearts and that if we say it out loud, that we are free or stay positive. If we try harder and with all of our might, that it might actually work. We actually, actually believe that we can somehow manage to subdue the power of evil in our souls. Jeremiah counsels us and says, can a leopard change its spots? Reminding us of the impossibility, the human uh, impossibility of trying to change our hearts. And we're able to see today that no amount of human effort will do what only Jesus Christ can do. Not only is his grace sufficient, but Jesus says, my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, my grace is able to accomplish exactly what is needed in your life no matter what it is. He says his power is perfect because we're able to see how strong God really is and his incredible ability to deliver. And because we are well aware of the severity of our weakness, we're able to see that when we see, we're able to see his power more clearly when we are aware of the severity of our situation. We know we're powerless to do anything about it. And when Christ begins to subdue our weaknesses and manifest his power, we learn the beauty of humble dependence on his life. Paul goes on to say in verse 12, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul doesn't see his weaknesses as a negative, but a plus. And the reason he sees it this way is because he has discovered that the weaker he is, the more it is the more that he will experience God's power. He comes to understand that brokenness is a gift of the grace of God because it allows us to see him for who he really is and experience his all sufficiency. One writer says, when we are weak and conscious of our weaknesses, we are in a state suited to the manifestation of the power of God. In other words, when we become conscious of our weaknesses, it is then that we are ready for the manifestation of his power. When we come to the place of surrender and we abandon trying to fix and save ourselves and heal ourselves, it is then that we are ready for God to come in and flood the soul with his grace. It is his presence. It is his grace in our brokenness that allows us, as Paul says in verse 10, it is his grace that paves the way for us to be content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. Because I know the Lord comes to me in my suffering and manifest his all-sufficient power, he says, I am content. In other words, he says, I take pleasure in my weakness. And that is what he's suggesting to us today, that when we begin to experience of the power of the grace of Christ resting on us, we take pleasure in it. We see our weaknesses as a good thing. For like Paul says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. We find God's strength and the strength he provides, the strength he prefers when we are weak. It is then that we are really strong. 
the Lord uses the weak things of the world. On the cross, while dying, he was totally disarming and disabling Satan's power in our lives. I remember, I want to close with this, when my three sons were between the ages of one and seven, they thought I was the strongest man in the world and that I had the biggest muscles. Uh, I could hold them all up in my arms, all three of them in my hands. I could, I could turn them upside down and hold them by their legs effortlessly. They could climb all over me and, and swing on my arms like they were on a giant jungle gym. They knew they didn't have to worry about a thing and that in their minds, I could handle anything, that I would keep them safe, that I would not allow them to fall. Even though they're much older now, my oldest, who is 13, uh, uh, almost now looking me in the eye, even he still thinks that I'm the strongest man alive. But every now and then, my, my oldest tries to wrestle with me to see if I'm really still that strong. And no matter how many times he tries to overpower me, he's reminded yet again that I am still stronger than him. I can't help but think how it is with us and God. No matter how old we get, he will always be our father. He will always be stronger than us, more capable. And all he asks for us to do is to trust in his all-sufficient strength by taking pleasure in our weaknesses. Because it is our weaknesses that causes us to experience the joy of his strength. I'm not sure what your thorn is, what your weaknesses are, what sins you're trying to overcome, what tragedy exists in your life or if you feel like your life or your family is broken beyond repair, remember that Jesus is sufficient for you. He is sufficient for your situation, for your hurt, for your family. And it is okay to be weak because it is then that we are truly strong. His power and his presence rests upon us. Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you for your grace that we see and experience in your son, Christ Jesus. Lord, dealing with our weaknesses and the pain and the trauma and hardships, persecutions, mental stress, Lord, can sometimes or oftentimes or always seem overwhelming. But Lord, we see here today that you provide grace, your presence, right where we need it. And so Lord, may we rest on you, rest in you, and may we experience your power. May we know that there's nothing wrong with weakness because it is then that we truly get to know you. Bless families, bless the people that are listening that have experienced trauma struggling with sin, may they know that your grace is sufficient for them. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we want to worship the Lord with our giving. There are several ways that you can give to the Hillcrest Church. The preferred method of giving is uh, www.hillcrest.nashville.org and uh, look for the tab to donate. Other ways to give, alternate ways to give, is adventistgiving.org. Uh, you can bring to the church and place in the church's mail, locked mailbox tithes and offerings. You can call area code 615-307-0940 and 
to schedule a pickup. And Cash App is operational again. And that's dollar sign The Hill Nashville. Let's bow our heads as we thank our Lord and Savior uh, for the opportunity to give back to Him. Our loving Father of Heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that you have allowed us to bring before you our tithes and offerings. We pray that as they're given, that they'll be blessed, and may they go to the furthering of your kingdom and the hastening of your soon coming. Lord, bless the gift and bless the giver. Bless the one who had it not to give. We ask it all in Jesus' name that all of us say, Hallelujah. We're going to praise our way on out today. Hallelujah. The song says he's all right. Is he all right with you? Wherever you are, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's just all right with me. Hallelujah. Now, after you've done that, I want you to stand up and I want y'all to rock and clap and put your hands together. Rock side to side. Hey, come on if he's all right with you. Yeah. subscribe if you haven't done so yet please 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 take some time to tell someone you care about 
that you love. And I'll start. Simple as this. Hillcrest Church family, I love you. See you all again next week.